Hey, what's going on, everybody? And welcome to another weekly video. And what I do in these videos is I provide upcoming earnings, upcoming events to get you prepared for the week ahead. That sounds like something you're interested in. Consider subscribing as I do also provide some technical analysis on Sundays. And I do also provide a daily pulse on the market on X at Hemi137. So you can check me out there as well. So with that being said, let's go ahead and go over the past week. Now, let's go ahead and preface this by saying we are kind of in a lull period going into essentially waiting for earnings to kick off. Again, I talk about you're pr you pretty much have these lull periods in between every uh, before every earnings cycle starts because in, when an earnings cycle starts again, uh, you typically get all everything is front loaded. So you get all your industry leaders and you get good insight into what's actually going on despite all the manipulated data that we talk about on this channel and all the other things that come into play. And it helps you get a real grasp of what's going on if there's particular earnings uh, that will help you pinpoint what could be coming in the next couple months. Now, I don't like to project too far ahead. If you know me and you follow me, that's what I do. I don't like to project far ahead. I like to know at least the, the first uh, next month or two, as I do do a lot of swing trading, intraday trading, uh, and sometimes uh, even longer term swing trades. So over several months, so it really just depends on the current position and what the events that are going on. But with that being said, it's good to know what is going on over the, the past week and where we're essentially headed. That's why I do this particular analysis uh, to try to project at least in the next month, month and a half to try to see where we're going before the next major event uh, and then kind of position our way, help or adjust our way along the way using technicals as well. So that's why I have two different videos and that's why I have this video. So with that being said, <laughs> without further ado, Let's kind of recap the week. Now, I said it's a, a very much a low period at this time. And why I say that is because what we're looking at here now is that uh, we are waiting for earnings. And with that being said, uh, we are also only 40 days out from election. Now, the election drama to this point is very very historical and very uh, exposing, if you will, as essentially X in itself has exposed a lot of what's been going on behind the scenes, uh, which is very, very interesting nonetheless. And I don't want to really get into a lot of the details of that, although some of these topics that we are talking about today will kind of talk about some of those things. And so that's why I'm trying to preface some of this stuff, because when you start talking about the markets, you have to understand that if a lot of stuff starts happening domestically, that could uh, become a big issue when it comes to the markets. You could put a lot of fear in the markets. You have to be aware of these things. Uh, not to say you have to read any further than uh, what I may go over. I try to give a high level view of a lot of these things. Uh, just so you're aware of them. I think just the awareness in itself is important. Uh, details don't really matter so much, but ultimately what, just in general, if you're swing trading, that's why I think technicals come into play because if you entry exit, uh, typically there is an event associated with that. So you kind of want to know what's floating around there and what could potentially happen and what is actually scheduled compared to what actually might be dropped. Now, a lot of this stuff that may seem like it comes out of the blue really doesn't come out of the blue. It builds up with anticipation for a specific time. Uh, and so you have to understand that. That's why I watch events closely. Again, you can go in the details if you want, or you can just take a high level overview of it. Uh, but ultimately, when you're navigating the markets, you kind of want to know about these things and have an awareness about these things. So that way, you, when you do your analysis and what your theory is, because I always think you should have some sort of theory about what's going to happen over the next uh, month at least, and then kind of go off of what's scheduled and then what could potentially play out during that week. So and what, again, industries uh, or industry leaders uh, could potentially benefit from whatever's going on. So that's why all those things come to account when taking position. So. Right now, over the past week, we've been talking about China over and over and over. They essentially injected tons, historically, amounts of money doing quantitative easing. Now, this past week, essentially, they've essentially cut bank reserve requirements. They are pulling out all the stops. They're doing all these rate uh, decisions just going over the past week. They are doing everything in their power to stimulate their economy. Now, they you have to understand, too, where they're coming from is that ultimately they 
it took a lot longer coming off of essentially lockdowns uh, for the pandemic. So that definitely has hurt them. Uh, so that is one thing to consider also with also, also saying that, again, uh, you know, Country Garden uh, in um, – it eludes me the other name. There's Country Garden and there's another one, but uh, essentially that are essentially uh, establishing their home loans. They have essentially went belly up and have, they have been trying to prop them up over the past two years uh, and not allow people to sell the stock. It took them a year to essentially uh, lock the stock down or froze the stock or trading on the stock for over a year. And then when it finally opened up, it was down like 80%. So uh, the manipulation there is obviously very bad. Uh, it happens here in the States, whether you want to believe that or not. If, so there's a big event that occurs. All of a sudden, all the exchanges have problems trading. Uh, since a lot more people nowadays, just a couple of years ago before the pandemic, a lot of people weren't in the market, but a lot of people are now are trying to make extra, uh, extra money. So a lot of people are in the stock market now because it's more accessible. And so now they're essentially the brokers just go down if there's some big event that occurs or they price in a ton in options so that they don't have to pay out. So these are all things you need to keep in account and things I talk about on this channel. So, so with that being said, again, um, China is leading the way. We are, they're going to affect us one way or another, even despite all this quantitative easing. Uh, we still will have to correct that. That is, we still have a lot of major problems that are essentially being upheld by uh, the massive amount of spending, the trillion dollars of spending that we do every 90 days. Uh, so there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes that you don't see, uh, but you just have to be aware of them and how it is working. And so that you don't get ahead of yourself, I'm not saying you should, again, go to uh, sway either bullish or bearish too much, but ultimately understand the market is designed to go up. So you need to keep that in mind, uh, but the market does correct. And so you also do have to keep that in mind. So you have to know when uh, awareness, when it's overextended. We've been on a very overextended uh, push here, especially because we've been on a pause since last October. You are in election year, a very important election year. So they are doing everything in their power to keep this thing propped up to at least after the election. And then I think it's fair game after that. And it doesn't matter who's sitting in office in February. This whole thing will come unbuckled. So with that being said, now that we are getting closer, we're on the 40 day mark, uh, 40,000 shipping uh, port workers from East and Gulf plan to go on strike on the 1st. It is going to be a huge week. If this happens, you know what's going to happen is there's going inflation is going to come roaring back. You don't we lose about I think it's five billion dollars a day for every day the ports are shut down. Just the East Coast and Gulf Gulf ports. That's how much we're losing. So just imagine what the significance of what that is actually going to happen if they if they do uh, go on strike on the first. Far as far as I'm aware, that is still what is planned. Uh, we also have a very big week this week, which I'll get into, and you understand why this is going to be even bigger this week. And when I start when we start looking at the expected expected moves, uh, you'll notice there that too that they are expecting a lot. Maybe not on the general index, but on the individual stocks are very high, like we're pricing in the end of the world. So these are things you really need to keep in account uh, because if they do go on strike, that will have a very significant uh, impact on the market. And in this past week, we also had New York City uh, Mayor Eric Adams uh, was indicted for a bunch of uh, fraudulent crimes. Uh, he's under indicted for five different things. But nonetheless, this all comes back to the whole P. Diddy thing and all that. I think the whole, again, I don't want to get too much into what's going on with there. I don't care about the celebrities. It's just understanding that he has ties, not just to celebrities, but he has ties, obviously, to all these other. I mean, Eric Adams just gave him the key to the city just a couple months ago. So these are things you have to keep in mind, uh, that there's a lot of things that are pressing right now, uh, trying to get people to sway for election for a certain somebody to get elected. If they don't, they are paying the price. And so, again, Evans had made a comment that he couldn't no longer take any more uh, migrants into New York City, that they were just over overrun. And from that point, essentially what has happened is uh, is now he's getting indicted shortly after he made that comment. So uh, whether you want to believe in that or, you know, you believe in conspiracy theories, I think there's always some truth to a lot of the things that are going on. There's a lot of fraud that goes on. The longer you are in markets, you realize this, that this occurs all the time. This is nothing new. Uh, so, again, this stuff is just being more exposed because it's a very heightened election. And so these are things you need to keep in mind. 
about what's actually going on and how it could again impact us domestically because something happens domestically uh, the market will go down for that and on those particular situations it'd be great to have some cash or some powder to be able to buy up uh, these dips if something like that occurs and so this is why i like to keep events on on par and what's currently going on because something could play from that and so uh, you just need to be aware of these things and it's always good to have cash in general uh, so that way you can buy dips if something like this does happen now Citibank. Citibank has been really noisy. So is uh, Jamie Dimon, the CEO of essentially JP Morgan. Uh, they've been talking a lot about hard landings, about more than just a recession, uh, essentially a depression. I've talked about us being in a depression. I mean, if you look on the media news, if you look on uh, X, I mean, a lot of these things, a lot of these cities are you know, drug infested and, and and just our infrastructure is falling apart. People are, we, it looks like the great, it's our version the, of or the Great Depression is currently what's going on. And again, something I've always talked about is uh, things are not as good as they seem, even despite all the data, they pencil whip this data. They, uh, again, are, are essentially spending a trillion dollars every 90 days. That's a lot of money to keep this thing propped up, prop up the GDP numbers, prop up all these other uh, different things that are currently going on. You have to understand there was a hundred, uh, what was $150 uh, billion dollars was spent on immigrants, on illegal immigrants all last year. And understand that now they're all spread out to these, uh, you know, split states and all because of the voting and everything, whether you want to read into that or not. Uh, I believe there's a lot of truth to that because of the spending that's going into it uh, and the housing costs and the food and the, and the credit cards and stuff that is going on there. Again, whether you want to believe that or not, that's what's going on. And I believe that is what's propping up a lot of the stuff that's going on. Uh, from what I'm hearing is after the election that that will stop. And all that spending will stop. And this is why I say February. This is why I'm leading up to all these things, because whether it's true or not, you have to believe there's some truth to that extent. So if they stop all this spending, which is a massive amount of money, uh, once that spending is stopped, what's going to happen to your GDP numbers? What's going to ha happen to all these other things? The, the bailing out of uh, mid-sized to small banks, reg right? regional banks, right now they're bailing everybody out until after the election after the election it is game on and then it's everybody every man for themselves uh, at that point and it's going to get very nasty at that point so this is what you need to keep in mind and so citibank is we talked about the 50 point basis move that occurred last week with the fed now it's just been days since we had 50 point basis move now they're talking about october is going to be another 50 point basis move they said we are having a hard landing you don't start randomly increasing it. I wasn't too surprised last week that they went 50 point basis move. Uh, I'm well aware that they are behind already. But the thing is, is uh, that if they're going to go with another 50 point basis move in October, which the odds of that happening are, are essentially skyrocketing at this point, uh, because a lot of uncertainty in the especially employment, uh, new jobs, there's hardly any new job openings. Uh, people are getting laid off and nobody can get new work. And so it's beginning really bad considering that inflation on necessary items are st is still very, very high, even pre-pandemic uh, because of our new uh, 3% uh, essentially inflation rate. Because again, I don't think we'll see 2%, this magical 2%. Uh, but nonetheless, if we hit a 50 point basis move in October, that is sheer panic. And then it also leads into, okay, well, what, what does December, what is December going to bring us at that point? That's the next question. So again, we are still, um, that shouldn't be October, actually. This should be November. The next one uh, should be in November is our next monetary policy. So do excuse me there, but they are, the odds of that happening is is really likely that's going to happen. And so again, you because you've gone a whole month without any monetary policy, uh, but we do have a big week next week uh, once we roll into that here. So if that happens, again, sheer panic in the market uh, because they know, like all these things I've talked about, they lead up to what's about ready to happen. Once the election's done, it's game on. And so you need to understand that it's it's not going to happen as soon as the election is over. So keep that in mind. I mean, despite everything, maybe it will happen uh, right after the uh, shortly after the election. 
But nonetheless, we should at least expect it around February, March, because that's when we normally pull back. That's normally when they start really laying on heavy. That's normally when you start getting seasonal changes in uh, essentially commodities. And that's one interesting thing, thing that I don't even have listed on here is commodities have been plummeting, which typically with rate cuts and all these other things that are going on with all the wars and stuff, oil doesn't drop like that. So there's something, there's heavy, heavy manipulation going on if you do not see it already. And if you're not in the market all the time, you're not watching charts, watching all the different industries, watching the headline news, you don't typically see these things. And so again, why I do this channel, because I see this stuff all the time and uh, it's more of an outlet for me to kind of throw it out there because uh, I see it all the time and it helps me make my decisions on positions. So that's why I figured I would share this, <laughs> this information. So being said, in the next couple, next week we have is a big, big week. Uh, despite everything going on, we do have Powell. Uh, he comes in at 155 on Monday. Uh, again, because it's a big Federal Open Market Committee, FOMC, is 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You are going to get not only Powell this week, uh, which I don't know if it's going to be open for him, so I don't know how much impact he's going to have there. But what really matters is Wednesday is going to be big. Why is Wednesday so big? Because they decided to change interest rates. That is why Wednesday is big. So now you have tons of Fed members speaking. Now we've always had this uh, essentially uh, essentially the notes from after what has happened with monetary policy. But when you have a major shift like this and you do a 50 point rate cut, it is even bigger because there's going to be lots of questions around why are you cutting 50? If the market is so strong and resilient, like you've been essentially telling everybody for over the past year, year and a half, why did you cut 50 points? What is the reason for that? You're trying to get ahead of the markets is what they're trying to say. And they last even last week when they after they had announced that they were essentially saying that, hey, it's not that big of a deal. 50 points isn't that big of a deal. Now you have all the Fed coming out and they're going to give their notes and exactly it's not that big of a deal. Uh, even the projections for November is high for another 50 point cut, which if you're just trying to uh, get ahead of the curve, quote unquote, why would you potentially be needing to do another 50 points after in November? Right. So, again, like we've talked about, you can't believe what they say. You have to do off the actions. And so you're going to get a very big week. Uh, and like I said, the market is pricing in a lot this week, especially individual stocks, maybe not the index so much. The index, index is a little bit higher than normal, but not too far off. But a lot of individual stocks are very, very high as you are also starting to roll into um, uh, earnings here as well. So you got to keep that in mind. And then on Friday, you have non-farm payroll. And again, we're starting to we're going to start seeing this this massive acceleration in in jobs, more job declines here going over the next couple of months. Uh, so even though they have cut, you know, again, I'm going to reiterate, you're going to need to have six to 12 months before you see the full impact of that 50 point basis move that you just saw last week. People are assuming that as soon as that cut happens, that things are just finding better from that point. No, they are not. That's just essentially the trigger that okay. Now we finally hit a turning point. Uh, roughly about a year from now, things will start to get better. But over the next year, things will get way worse. That's what you need to keep in mind and what we can reflect back in 2008. A lot of people are trying to emphasize that, no, this is a soft landing. I don't believe that. Uh, I don't believe that at all, especially what's going on with China and Europe. Uh, they are absolutely crumbling right now. And I think we will very much be the same, especially after the election. Like I said, there won't be a reason uh, to try to get anybody elected at that point. So at that point, then it's it's fair game because there's someone sitting in a seat. And so at that point, it's it, anything can happen at that point. You can go ahead and stop trying to play goody two shoes at that point. So so we'll see. But big week on deck. Like I said, they have to. There's going to be a lot of discussion about why they have made that 50 point basis move cut. And then uh, we'll also get that in front of the committee as well. So they'll be in front of the House. Uh, Powell will be in front of the House and the Senate. I, I'm not sure when that is. That might be, I don't think it's this week. It might be next week or the week after that. Uh, so you got a lot of big events going up into earnings. And then, like I said, once you start getting some of the big 
uh, earnings, then you're going to have the election on top of everything. So you know, essentially close everything out. You're going to have a horrible earnings. You're going to have more layoffs. You're going to have whatever other news comes from the P. Diddy stuff. And it's going to get really bad. This is why I say they like to essentially uh, provide you with tons. They flood you with information, especially during a time like this, to hopefully you don't catch some of the details uh, because there is so much going on. And they, they try to distract you with or, or potentially cast blame on something else when in fact it's always the debt-based system that is broken and busted and the corruptness comes from that uh, and people are price gouging and it's control and power and so you need to know exactly how that works and so that's what i, I do this channel and try to talk about these things uh, as you again you're positioning yourself and trying to take advantage of, of the markets whether it's uh, stock market you talk about some housing and automobiles a little bit but uh, it all kind of correlates nonetheless if the economy is the economy and if it's in a bad position uh, you don't want to be in position so or just wait and be patient and take advantage and i guess something i stated too is you know they're going to start cutting rates so everybody's moving out of you know i've talked about dividends on this on this channel a couple different times and a lot of people are, are going to have to start coming out of the savings because you're not going to have that nice five percent uh, savings account anymore that people have essentially positioned themselves into dividends at this point uh, because of that. And so, again, we shall see. But um, like I said, the next monetary policy is until the seventh, so we got a while before that happens. And then uh, the next core is on the fourteenth of October, uh, and then cores on the ninth. So we won't get the core till after. Which again, I'm not really watching inflation until probably like. I would probably say around uh, spring of next year, I think inflation could really start getting bad, especially when you start getting a lot of um, a lot of these inflation uh, or a lot of these uh, rate cuts that are going to potentially occur over the next couple of months. Uh, then uh, again, six months to a year, you're going to really see that really, really impact the market again, which we could see a inflation come roaring back at that point. So. Upcoming earnings. Earnings doesn't start to the 11th of October, so that will be a very important date uh, as, again, you're going to see more and more uh, decline going into the election of things getting worse. So, And then uh, expect the moves. So like I said, uh, expect the moves. It's a little bit higher than normal. We talked about this. Normally about 65 is about normal. It's about sitting at 77. Tesla has got about a 20-point move. Tesla's got a big event coming up on the 10th of October as well. Uh, with the robo taxis and humanoid stuff so uh, that's a big one to be watching uh, as i do believe their move i've been talking about tesla over the last couple months hopefully you got some good positions because we were talking about tesla at 175 165 uh, levels not that long ago now it's it's kind of roughly been basing at around 200 and now back up to i believe around 260 at this point so that being said uh, it's still pricing in a lot for Tesla, so do be careful of that. BA is still pricing in a lot at eight. Again, I don't know why it's so even high or where it is. I think it's still at 150. Uh, that stock with all this the drama around it should be at like at five bucks, but it's not. So, <laughs> um, and then JP Morgan's at five. So JP Morgan again doesn't move very much, but again, still very very high with all of the big events. Uh, speculating around why they are cutting and what could potentially be coming and the non-farms. You do have some really big events that's not including all the PDD drama, all the election drama that's going on. You have so much news, it's hard to really decipher what's going on. So you just kind of want to awareness. You don't have to go into all the details. Even the PDD stuff I talk about, that's just more related to if they start calling out, uh, uh, you know, if they start calling out... Um, government officials that is going to have a big impact and so that's why you need to keep track of that because when they start calling out like the the mayor right like that's big i don't think that's ever happened before uh that a mayor has been indicted like that because of what's going on so uh you got a lot a lot of problems going on here and so um especially during again like a very prime election period uh where there's a lot of stress and a lot of things that are going on behind closed doors and every weekend Essentially, since that first uh, assassination attempt, it's, it's there's be prepared for drama to happen over the weekend uh, and then uh, expect something. Right. You're only 40 days away. It is uh, prime time, <laughs> prime time for news. So uh, just be prepared, even though it's been kind of 
Uh, not so busy week. It will be. And then the earnings are just going to bring a lot more uh, stuff to, to talk about and speculate what could potentially play out from that. Ultimately, uh, again, we just want to try to get past the election past then is then when we can really uh, kind of see through what is actually going to hold weight, uh, where we are kind of going from there. Because again, depending on who gets in office could play a lot in positioning and policy and everything else uh, that's going on. So these are all things you need to keep an account for. And this is why it's such a, uh, a big critical time. But again, it will all be offloaded. So just be prepared for all that. And again, if there's drama here uh, domestically that will have impacts on the market. So with all that being said, if you did make it this far, go ahead and drop a like. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.